Our detectives have determined that Madeline was never dropped off on the morning of February 26th near her school. Instead, we believe she was already dead at the time and that Stephen Stearns moved her body in the early morning hours on that day. We have video evidence that shows Stephen Stearns discarding items in a dumpster in that apartment complex in Kissimmee at 7.35 on Monday, February 26. Detectives later recovered Madeline's backpack and her school-issued laptop from that dumpster. At 8.19, we have evidence that shows Stephen Stearns returning to the complex and Madeline was visible in that vehicle. We believe she was already dead at that time. Welcome back. Despite all that evidence that he's laying out, still no murder charges in this case for Stephen Stearns. All, these, all the charges that he's facing now, 60 counts are all sex abuse and, and child sex abuse on his phone that's recorded. Look, look at this massive, massive list. But I want to specifically look at, a, at one area of these charges, which are very significant, especially now in the state of Florida. Sexual battery on a child under 12. Eight counts of that, okay? Significant. The other counts are significant as well, but that's the most significant. Why? Because of a brand new law down in Florida, which went into effect on October 1st of 2023. A person 18 years of age or older, Stephen Stearns, uh, who commits sexual battery upon or an attempt to commit sexual battery injures the sexual organs of a person less than 12 years of age commits a capital felony. It's now a potential death penalty for the sex crimes in Florida for someone under the age of 12, the victim. And you look, this goes back to 2019 now, right? clearly under the age of 12, going all the way to 2022, still under the age of, of 12 in 2022 in the summer. Now, here's the problem. The, the law went into effect in 2023. So is this a potential death penalty case just for the sex abuse charges? Let's bring in the think tank. Joining us live in studio tonight, criminal defense attorney, entertainment attorney, former assistant DA in Atlanta, Daryl Cohen. Also with us tonight, criminal defense attorney and Emory University law professor, Molly Palmer. And finally, family law attorney and law professor at Emory University, Randy Kessler is with us. So it's Daryl and the professors tonight. Great to see everyone. Um, can you punish someone for conduct back in 2022 and 2019 with a law that was passed in 2023? I would hope so, but the answer is no, and that's spelled in O. Unfortunately, it's called ex post facto. No. You don't think it's... it's he it's, deserves nothing less and nothing I more. I understand what he deserves. I want to know what the law is the first. Law, in my view, no, because you cannot pass a law regarding something that took place before and prosecuted. Even if it's just the punishment? So here's the, here's the issue. The law actually is unconstitutional because in 2008, there was a United States Supreme Court case, Louisiana versus Kennedy. It was a 5-4 decision wherein the court analyzed the interplay of the Eighth Amendment, the prohibition on cruel and unusual punishment compared to the Tenth Amendment, the state's rights to, le the, to legislate. And they said, if there's not a death or an intent to do death, you know, kill somebody, then you cannot impose the death penalty. The fact that Florida has enacted this law is one thing. I mean, legislatures all the time enact unconstitutional laws. I do believe that this law will be found unconstitutional as it has been before. I also think this is going to be a murder case, and that then will make it a capital Right, felony. that that gets, so the sex crime's not going to do it. You agree, Professor I, Kessler? Molly makes law professors look good, doesn't she? She's exactly yeah. right. So on two counts, he loses. The law is non constitutional and it's ex post facto we get to use those fancy words we learned in law school can't declare something illegal after it's already happened and then convict somebody of it okay so on on, on two different grounds we're, we're saying this might be a problem to try to get a death penalty from the sex crimes okay daryl everyone's asking why hasn't he been charged yet 
because at this point, at least in the state attorney's office eyes, he, they don't have enough evidence to, to where they're circling. Believe me, they're looking. They're looking at DNA. They're looking at every piece of evidence they can possibly find. And when they have enough, because he's incarcerated, he can't go anywhere. All he can do is go get his meals, go to the cafeteria, maybe. They'll charge him, but they want to wait because they can wait. It's not as if he can disappear, flee the country, flee any place. Well, a lot of people scratching their heads because, you know, in, in the initial um, press conference, they're saying, we believe her dead body's in his car. Belief is not tantamount to proof. Right, and I think in this case, it's strategically smart for the state to charge him with, what, 60-plus additional felonies for which he's facing life in prison because people want to know. They want to know the specifics, and sometimes investigation doesn't get you there. So now you have leverage. You can sit with him and say, look, you're facing life either way. I haven't charged you with capital murder. Tell us what happened. And at that point, perhaps there are some unanswerable questions at this point that resolve all of these things we're wondering about. Well, a lot of people also wondering about the mother, Randy. Well, the mother. Well, first of all, the father. He might wish. He's not the, the father. Not the the, the she, boyfriend. Wait, wait. The, the stepfather. Yeah, well, let's, she, let's, called let's, 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 she called him the stepfather. You're a family law guy, so you know better than all of us. Uh, but <laughs> apparently, the mother referred to him as Madeline's stepfather. We don't know what Madeline called him because I'm, she's not with us. I'm sure she called him predator. Right. predator would I don't be think what they were. Him. I don't think they were married, but there are rumors that maybe they did get married. I don't right. know. But back to what I was saying, he could. He probably would be wishing for the death penalty. You don't want to be in jail forever with the conviction of those crimes. So back to that, he might say, please give me the death penalty after this trial. But yes, the mother, you know, that's strange behavior. Why is she not out there telling the whole world everything she knows, talking to the cops, saying, I mean, she, well, she might be. We don't know. We don't know where she is, by the way. But remember, if she does, she may put herself in very deep yogurt. Well, what, what kind of potential problems could mom have here? I mean, the way that she behaved during the press conference, I thought was strange from the beginning, right? There's no tears with either of them. She said a few things that I, I found to be very, um, you know, off-putting. So, so if she is complicit in terms of the murder, these charges also can serve as leverage against her. You know, a good lawyer well, can describe, say... Well, what do you mean by complicit? What, what, what sort of action? If what, she knows right? about the murder but is not involved in the production of child sexual exploitative material or the sexual batteries, then now she can become a source of information to implicate him, who is seem, you know, seemingly more egregious in his behavior. If she has any involvement in the killing of her child, now those unanswerable questions can be answered through her, and he can be prosecuted what, what defines for fuller. What? Where's the line between knowledge and involvement? Because a lot of people talk about this concept of turning a blind eye. That's well, exactly that's what she <laughs> may have done. Well, it's she also can... different when you're a parent. You have a duty to take care of a child, and child endangerment means you're, you're responsible for a child. You've got to protect the child. If it's your child and I know something's going on, that's different. Do I have a duty to intervene? Less so than if it's in my household, I've got to protect my child. That's... So, so does the knowledge get you to... Murder? Yes, Parties can. to a crime. Conspiracy. Absolutely. She may not have done anything other than see, feel, or hear what's going on, but clearly, in my view, she can be charged with and convicted of murder if the evidence is there that she knew what was going on. Exactly. Just, not, just no, not, act, not doing anything physically to take the life, not doing anything to sexually abuse her own daughter, but knowing that it's going on and knowing that the murder took place can wrap her up in, in the actual murder charges? Ex accessory after the fact. If she did anything in terms of trying to cover it up. And certainly deliberate ignorance is no defense. You don't get to turn a blind eye under the law. And the jury is often instructed on that very provision. So it, yes. It might, it might be an option for him. If he wants to lessen his sentence, he might say... Mom was holding the camera. Mom was involved. Mom knew about all this. You don't have anything on mom. I'm going to give you mom on a silver platter. Give me something in return. You never know what's going to happen. Inactive mm -hmm. participant. She can still be charged. She can still be convicted. And the two of them can play one another. Each can play one and they can go down together. All right, let's talk about something else that's a big part of this case. All of these images, hundreds of images. Um, and they're all connected to the charges, right? The first 20 counts, there's images of all of them that he's being charged with. And 
how far do you think this investigation will go in terms of trying to figure out if there's connections to anyone else? I mean, I wonder if the feds are going to get involved. If, if you actually have a production case, which I think has been hinted at, I mean, is this just possession of child sexual exploitative material or is he producing it? I mean, those are typically cases that the FBI gets involved with and then they start seeing, you know, like you said, how far did it go? How nefarious is this conduct? Is this being sold and disseminated on the World Wide Web? These are questions that I think the feds would like to answer or perhaps it stays in Florida and maybe it is some that was limited to their home and, and you know, just the child and, and not being shared amongst other people on the internet. Too bad the victim isn't here, right? That's the sad news. You're not going to ever hear a testimony. You're not, you don't have any forensic interviews. It's all hindsight. It's all circumstantial. It sounds like they got a heck of a lot of circumstantial evidence to put him away, but Molly's right. If there are other players, other people that participated or benefited or profited. Do you I think there's more images somewhere? Absolutely. It ain't over till it's over. There are more images somewhere, and they're not going to go away. Sort of reminds me of a case having to do in Fulton County. Nothing happened until it did, and the more it happens, the more expansive it becomes. If they find a person or persons who bought the porn, and they can prove him or her to have bought it, he or she can be also charged federally. Is this, is, and is information like that something that his attorney would ask him about? Can it be used in some strange way as, as a bargaining chip? Not just to go after mom, but let's say there is a, a, some connection to some larger ring here. I mean, you don't have to ask him because our technology, computer forensics, is so in depth that we're going to find out if there is more. Like, you know, didn't he say he had to re he reset his phone? I reset my phone. The, he made the accidental re factory, factory reset. Accidental. 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 Reset. So, you know, people don't realize that there are all these files. If ever you've possessed them, deleting them or resetting your phone doesn't do anything. And so they're going to do a more thorough forensic imaging of all of these devices. And typically, somebody who engages in this behavior, one of the hallmarks of this conduct, usually, you know, you, you are a collector right if you are this type of person and so yes there could be a lot more that remains to be seen and, and Vinny yes could he implicate somebody else to get a better benefit for himself yet yeah, not just who he sold it to what if somebody was pulling his puppet strings and saying listen here's how you do it here's what we want here's what sells yep. and there's somebody bigger than him a bigger fish that they can catch then you're onto something then he's gonna get a deal he's gonna get less than he would otherwise get does he want a deal as pointed out earlier or does he want to live it, on death row because you're because a little he'll be more protected, protected absolutely one final question one final question, and a lot of people want to know this. Does he get to see those images again as an accused? No, that's not how that works. So He's not allowed to see it? No, you cannot disseminate the, this type of discovery to your client. So what the attorney's responsibility... What happens during the trial? So the attorney has we'll a responsibility it. to, you know, assess quantity of images, types of images, whether there's sadomasochism involved. And so you have to go to a controlled setting where a federal agent or an agent from the state shows you what's before. And only show it to the lawyer. To the lawyer. What only if he wants to represent wait, himself? Wait a minute. If we have a trial, he is going to see each and yes, every trial. image yes. that's yes. introduced will come out. by discovery. the state. Not right. Yes, not, not in yes. discovery yes. at trial. A lot of people want to know that.